Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through lead code problem 957, prison cells after n days. Uh, let's take a look at the problem first. There are eight prison cells in a row, so it's a definite number, and each cell is either occupied or vacant. How do we denote occupy or vacant, it says. So here it says we describe the current state of the prison in the following way. If a cell value is 1, that means this cell is occupied. Otherwise, if it's 0, this cell is vacant. Basically, this is a binary array. The value is either 0 or 1. Let's take a look at the rules, how the cells are supposed to change. Each day, whether the cells whether the cell is occupied or vacant changes according to the following rules. Two rules. One is if a cell that has adjacent neighbors that are both occupied or both vacant, then the cell becomes occupied. Otherwise, it becomes vacant. Note that because the the prison is a row. The first and the last cells in a row can't have two adjacent neighbors, which means it's guaranteed that the first and the last cell in the row should always end, end up in vacant, which is zero. Let's take a look at, at the example. The example, the last day, the first one and the last cell, it's always zero. Otherwise, it's incorrect, right? So the problem is asking us, given the initial state of the prison, return the state of the prison after n days and n such changes described above. Let's take a look at the first example. The first, the cell is given like this, 0101001. n is 7, which means after 7 days, it's asking us to output the correct status of the prison. Let's take a look. The correct output is this. And how we got to this, there are a total of 7 steps. So we need to go through. We only need to go through a couple of days. So day 0 is the given state like this one exactly like this one and then day one is going to change following these two rules if the two neighbors are occupied and then this one becomes occupied or if the two neighbors are vacant then this cell becomes occupied as well otherwise it becomes vacant so let's take a look at day one day one the first cell is always going to be zero because it, it doesn't have two neighbors so regardless of the one-sided neighbor so let's start from the second one the second one is this it does have two neighbors and both neighbors are vacant meaning they're the same they have the same value so this one is still occupied then let's take a look at this one this one it does have two occupied neighbors so this one should become one and this one this one it has one is occupied and one is occupied the other is vacant so this one becomes zero vacant and then this one it also becomes vacant because one side is occupied the other side is vacant how about this one this one becomes vacant as well because it's un it's unequal on both sides of this one how about this one this one becomes zero as well because this one is occupied and this one is not and the last one is a last cell, so it doesn't have two neighbors, so it becomes zero. So this is how it changed after day one. Continue to do this until n equals seven, until the seventh day. Then that's the final result that we're going to output. This is how this program is supposed to run. And then let's take a look at, uh, at uh, the notes for uh, the prerequisites for this problem, which says there's a total of a definite number of cells. There are a total of eight cells in this row and each cell is binary is either zero or one but then to pay attention to this and it can go to this big which means if we use the brute force or most straightforward way we might end up in time limit exceeded exception because is it possible that we have redundant repetitive computation right is it possible let's take a look at one example suppose we are given this cell on day one this cell looks like this, a total of eight cells. And on day one, only the first and last is unoccupied and the rest from the first to the sixth, all of these six in the middle cells, they are all occupied. Let's just suppose N is infinite, say N is 100 or 99. Let's go through a, couple, a few of them. First on day one, how it's going to change. It's going to change like this. This cell is going to become zero. That is because its neighbors are not equal. One is zero, the other is one, right? So is this one. This one changed from one to zero because its two neighbors are not equal. Okay, this is day one. Day two, it continues to change. This one becomes zero for the same reason. This one becomes zero for the same reason. Day three. Day three, it be this one becomes one. That is because both of its neighbors are equal now. So this one becomes one. And for the same reason, this one becomes one. But for these two, they both become zero because its neighbors are not equal. Okay. 
that's clear. Now let's take a look at day four. Day four is continue. It's going to continue to shift. And this time, this one, this cell becomes one. That is, that is because both of its neighbors are equal. And this one becomes one as well. That's for the same reason. Now day five. On day five, this one becomes to one. That is because its neighbors are equal. And this one becomes one. That is because its neighbors are equal. And these two ones become zeros. That's because both of their neighbors are not equal. All right, let's continue changing. So far, we don't see any rep repetition. We don't see any patterns, right? All of these first five days, all of them are still unique. Let's move on. Day six. Day six, and this one becomes zero. This one becomes zero. This one doesn't change. This zero doesn't change. This, these two ones become zeros for the reasons that we described above. Now, moving on. Still, we haven't seen any repetitive patterns yet. Moving on. Day seven. Day seven, these, all of these from the first to the sixth, all of these six ones in the middle have all become to one. That is because all of their neighbors are the same, same value. They are all vacant, all zeros, right? So notice, is there any pattern? Have we run into any cycles? Is there? Yes, there is. This one is exactly the same as the initial given state. Sounds like... We might be entering a cycle. If you're not sure, let's move on. So for day eight, we are getting this. That is because we are following the same rule and the, this state becomes the initial state. So of course, the next day is going to be the day eight is going to be exactly the same as day one, right? Moving on, day nine is going to be exactly the same as day two. Day 10 is going to be exactly the same as day three. So you see the difference is seven, right? So we can continue to move on until like how many days, but it's a cycle. It's a cycle, cycle, cycle. It continues to repeat itself. So we can move on. All of these to day 14. Day 14 is going to be exactly the same as day seven, as we can see. So the time it takes to finish a cycle is seven, which means for any n, if this n is greater than seven then we only need to compute n modulo seven i hope that makes sense because after we exceed the number of days equal to seven it's going to repeat itself then we can just cut it short we don't need to all of these we don't need to go through all of those repetitive computations i hope that makes sense if n equals to eight then we can do it only once right because the seven days is going to be meaningless. We don't need to calculate those seven days because it's a cycle there, right? The same goes for if n equals to 99, we can cut all of those repetitive computation out. It's going to be exactly the same as n equals to one or n equals to eight. We'll just do the modular function. This is going to help us a lot, especially when n is extremely big. The n could go as big as 10 to the magnitude of nine. That's a huge number. Of course, it's going to save us a lot of repetitive computation along the way. That's the idea. Very straightforward. It might not be the most optimal. I'm sure there are more optimal ways to do this, but this is one way to get this code accepted. And I, in my mind, it's pretty straightforward. Now let's put the algorithm into the actual code. So how do we do that? First, we want to, how can we detect if there is a cycle? We want to have a hash set to, to store all of the states in different days. So in that case, we can use, we can initialize a hash set of type string, which is called set for simplicity, new hash set. Again, this set is used for us to store the different states for each day to see if there is a cycle. Then we need another variable called boolean, which is called has cycle. First, we we'll default to be false, next, We'll say, how many days does it take before we can detect there is a cycle? So we'll just call it days. Initialize to be zero. And then we'll just go through n. We don't know if there's a cycle or not. This n could be seven, could be 14. This, the number of days it's going to take before we can detect a cycle could be seven, could be 14, right? So we don't know. So in the first, in the beginning, we're going to start from zero and go all the way up to n. Start from zero up to n. At this point, 
we can we can calculate the 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 states for the next day. We we'll just call it next. Um, which is quite next for the concisiveness of the code. I'm going to use another function. Let's just call it get next. Let me implement here private uh, int get next int sales. So this is the key here. Um, this is one of the key functions that we're going to need. We we'll just call this next. The next day length is going to be exactly exactly the same as the current one and how we're going to implement this is sales length i plus plus if i equals to zero or i equals to sales length minus one then in this case next is guaranteed to be zero because it has only one neighbor right Otherwise, we'll use next should be, we'll check if the two neighbors on the current cell that we are iterating on, which means minus one equals to cells i plus one, whether these two neighbors are equal, regardless whether they are occupied or vacant, whether they are zero or one, it doesn't matter. As long as they are equal, this current cell we're iterating on should become occupied. All right. Otherwise, it's going to be vacant, which is zero. And then in the end, we're just going to return next. This is the helper function that we need to write just to make the code more concise. Next, we can call it a string to put an easy way to, to change a simple integer array into a string, which is like this arrays to string. In different languages, there are multiple different ways, but in Java, I think this is this should be a pretty straightforward way. So here we check if the set, this hash set, contains the, the this state that we that we currently generated for the next day. Whether we have this, we, whether we have generated this state already. Let's see. If it first, if it doesn't have it, then we can just happily put this string into this hash set. And then we'll also increment days by one, which means that we'll add, we, it, it's going to take us one more day before we can reach, before we can detect a cycle if there is one. Otherwise, what we're going to do is that we'll put has cycle to be true, and then we're going to break out because we detected a cycle. There is no point moving forward. It's going to cost us more time, right? So after that, what we'll do is we'll change, we'll will assign the newly calculated state for the next day to be the new date so that we can continue to iterate on. Getting out of this for loop, what we want to do is, it's possible that this n is very small, like smaller than seven or smaller than 14, that this has cycle is still false. In that case, we can just return, return cells, that's it, right? But just in case, if there is a cycle, the n is very big and there is a cycle in there, has cycle. If that is the case, we are only going to run through n modular the number of days. Days. This n, we are going to change it in place, change this n to be a much smaller number. All of these full cycles, we don't need to run through anymore. I hope that makes sense. At this point, we can have another for loop, you can have a while loop as well, as long as it serves this purpose. So here, well, we can just do sales, get next, sales, until we traversed through up to n. This n is the number of days that we have to go, through, the minimum number of days that we have to go through without running into cycles. That's it for this algorithm. I think this is going to work. Let's try to run the code first. See if there's any syntax error. Huh, there is one. Okay, sales, not sell. Run again. All right, accepted. Let me hit submit.
all right accepted 36 percent not super optimal but at least this is something that very that's very straightforward to help people understand this problem and how this works this problem is very similar to the one that we went through last time called game of life uh, it's just a there's some variation between this one and that one i hope uh, this video helps people understand this problem if that's the case just do me a favor and quickly destroy the like button that's going to help a lot with the youtube algorithm and i really appreciate it also don't forget to hit the subscribe button as we continue to go through a lot of interesting interview or lead code problems and if you have any questions comments just leave me down in the comment section below i really appreciate your time see you guys in the next one